Miller Mahdi from 8451 here. Welcome to another episode of The Upload. We're glad you're here. Each month, we dig into the world of AI, thick data, machine learning, data science. We invite you to stick around and let us know what you think. Keep an open mind and stay curious. Welcome to The Upload. I'm your host, Dan O'Keefe. On today's episode, we're talking to lead data scientist, Alex Gutman. Welcome, Alex, to The Upload. Thanks for having me. So, Alex, we're discussing 8451's Enterprise Data Science Academy, right? A program yes. you're very much involved with. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and also, also your background, your professional background? Yeah, my background is in math. I went to college. I was studying to become a high school math teacher. Okay. And I, I really liked the advanced math, so I kept going, got my master's and eventually my PhD. And I, I shifted a little bit from theoretical math to more applied math and statistics. I didn't know there was a difference, theoretical and applied. Yeah, there, there's a big difference. All right. Um, but after graduation, I got uh, started working at Procter Gamble as a statistician in their research and development department. And then I was there for about five years, did a lot of machine learning. Um, and then I joined 8451 about a year, I think a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And since that time, I'm, I'm on a team here where we try to enable others to use machine learning. So I do a lot of training, um, short courses and consulting to help the company embed more machine learning in their processes. Okay. And, and I appreciate that, Alex, but I think you be, you're being a little modest, right? Uh, you were <laughs> not long ago uh, the recipient of a Fulbright grant to, yes. to teach about technology in Kyrgyzstan. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, Tell back, us more. Yeah, back in September, I, I spent the, the whole month in Kyrgyzstan mm -hmm. and I applied for this Fulbright program about two years ago. I had always had Fulbright on my radar throughout college. And I think after I joined industry, I... I thought I lost my opportunity because usually it's professors that go and do these Fulbrights. Sure. But I found out about this Fulbright specialist program, and that's a program where professionals or academics could do it too, where you go for two to six weeks. So it's not a, a full year. Okay. Um, so I went through the application process, was put on a roster where you can bid on projects across the world. Mm -hmm. And in Kyrgyzstan, there was um, a government organization called the High Tech the high technology park of Kyrgyzstan, and they're trying to improve the IT infrastructure and capabilities of the country. Okay. And they, they had this gap in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Basically, they, they want to know what 8451 and Kroger want to know. What, what can we do with these technologies? How do we do it? Um, mm -hmm. You know, how do we get started? And in Kyrgyzstan, they're a few years back in terms of infrastructure and everything. So uh, I spent the month there. I taught workshops on machine learning. I gave presentations to university students about what is machine learning and AI? What is it not? Because there's a lot of hype and hyperbole sure. around these subjects. Um, so I taught some hands-on coding and it was really a great experience. That's great. And you were gone. So you're basically on sabbatical for a month. Yes. Yeah, I was gone for a month. How'd your manager, manager feel about that? Yeah, they were very, very supportive. Okay, um, good. My as, wife, as we are here at eighty four fifty. Yeah, right? my wife was the most supportive. We have three young kids, um, and she stayed home with them alone. Saint, she is a saint. <laughs> yep, came back with a lot of flowers for her. I hope. And yeah, yeah, that's definitely, good. that's good. Um, so it sounds like that was a a good precursor for what we're talking about today. 8451's Enterprise Data Science Academy. All right. Yes. Can you please tell us what is the academy and why was it created? Yeah, um, 8451, ha we have a lot of good training here for data scientists mm -hmm. where we help the technical people become better. Um, one gap that we've had and that we need to fill is that we want to raise the data science IQ, not only of the technical side, but also of the business side. Right. So that's the ultimate goal of this Enterprise Data Science mm -hmm. Academy is to get everybody up to speed on these technologies, um, ultimately, so we can drive value for 8451 clients and our customers. And to that point, what uh, challenges is the Academy solving for 8451's working processes? I, I think the biggest challenge that we're trying to address right now is simply awareness, mm -hmm. because outside of a company, you hear a lot of different views about machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence. And it paints in my view, kind of a false picture of what it is and what it can accomplish. And that really creates a challenge when it 
comes to work on a project. Mm -hmm. If there's a mismatch of expectations about what AI can do, uh, I think some companies who sell these solutions will say, well, AI can just solve anything. Right. But th that's not true. Um, so the, the challenge that we're trying to do is remove any communication barriers and help people learn the language of data science, mm -hmm. what it can do, what it can't do, um, because we want to be able to put people in a position to spot opportunities. And so tell me the audience or audiences of the Academy. Yeah, the, the Academy, I, I should clarify, we're in our early stages. OK, um, I've been teaching a class called Demystifying Data Science and Machine Learning mm -hmm. and the students, if you will. I mean, my um, they're 8451 and employees mm -hmm. are peers and but they're on the um, non data science side. So that would be our consultants, okay. CSAs. But eventually we want to take this to Kroger. Mm -hmm. um, and we will also let data scientists know what their business counterparts are learning about in right. this class. Of course, we're talking here, not just to the data scientists uh, of 8451, but to data scientists around the world, we hope, right? Yes. What, uh, is there something for them to learn from the academy at some point? I would hope so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not quite sure what I want that to be yet. <laughs> right. Um, certainly our, well, you're dispelling myths, you said, right. And yeah, having to educate a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I think it is good maybe for younger data scientists to also realize the challenges that our business partners face Yeah, because we come out of college and we're very technically focused and we want to put our hands on the keyboards and solve a problem. Um, but the business is under real pressure to mm -hmm. answer these questions and, so that there just needs to be better communication between these two groups, I think. When uh, you talk about the mysteries and the myths around data science, what are some of those that you're trying to dispel? The biggest myth I think that's out there, um, I, I've, I think about this a lot, and it's this idea that there is some artificial intelligence. It's, mm -hmm. you know, there's an AI right. that's solving it's something. kind of running everything, right? Right. <laughs> Where it, it's a single network Skynet computer that's mm -hmm. answering all these questions. And that is certainly not the case. Everything that we consider um, that you hear as artificial intelligence is really machine learning. And mm -hmm. that has a more concrete definition, which is learning from data. Right. So behind all of these AI technologies you hear in the news, um, it's really data sets, like it's driven mm -hmm. by curated data sets. And I think that's the one of the main messages I get across is we need to start with the right ingredients for these projects, mm -hmm. which is accurate data, relevant data. And in, in many cases, you need a lot of this type of data in order to answer right. questions. And to be clear, we're, we are not in danger of robot overlords uh, <laughs> determining our fates in the near future or distant future for that matter. No, okay. um, I, I certainly don't think so. Right. I, I know there are a lot of People who might disagree with me, I think even Elon Musk paints a scarier view of the future than I do. But An interesting view, yeah. Yeah. My favorite um, AI and machine learning expert who I follow, Andrew Ang, he had a good analogy and he said, worrying about AI taking over the future is like worrying that we're going to overpopulate Mars. Hmm. Yeah. That's too far in, into the future to even think about it right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, speaking of things here on Earth in a practical sense, what is a practical example of how AI is solving everyday problems? For the, the general public, yeah. I, I think um, we, we as consumers, Kroger consumers and just in general. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with in general. I think um, probably the main application of machine learning mm -hmm. that people see that's behind the scenes is your spam filter on your email. And that's been around for years. And it learns because if you remember the old days of having email and Gmail, you would get a spam email and you would click on Google and say, this is spam. Yep. Um, and after billions of email messages came across, there was a labeled data that said what's spam and not spam. Right. And then with that, you can feed that into a machine learning algorithm and it picks up these patterns. Mm -hmm. So spam filter is a big one. A popular one now is also the Z estimate or the Z estimate on Zillow yep. where everyone talks about their, that. Yep. Yeah. The real estate. That's based on um, machine learning algorithms. Yeah. They know the specs of your house. I mean, that that's provided mm -hmm. and then um, the sales price. So with that, you can identify patterns. Okay. Speech recognition, facial recognition are all applications of 
um, so the new machine learning, like the clear that you now can use at the at the TSA check line when they they oh yeah yeah that's that's all AI machine learning yeah. machine learning yeah okay yeah all right and they don't want you to really smile in your picture now because that makes it a little harder um, to identify they want your face kind of static Neutral. yeah my wife just got a new passport photo and they told her not to smile yeah because it yeah. would it would fool the AI it's like more like a mugshot right? <laughs> right right yeah gotcha okay well that's thank you for that that's a great explanation um, so. How would you describe the true purpose of AI and specifically how are 8451 and Kroger using it? So we're kind of bringing it back to where we started. Yeah. At 8451 and Kroger, they, there are a lot of applications of mm -hmm. machine learning, which again is, is learning from data. That's the true purpose of right. it. Um, because if you think of one of our main applications of machine learning here that people know 8451, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, because we send coupons, we send mailers, best right. customer uh, bonus, things like that. And without machine learning, you can imagine you would have to write a bunch of rules into the computer mm -hmm. that would say, oh, if you like cereal, maybe you want to buy Pop-Tarts. Or if you like, if you purchased health food last week, maybe you should get coupons for organic um, items in the future. Right. But if you consider the millions of households who we, um, so items too. And then mm -hmm. the thousands of items in the store, if you had to write all of these rules, that would be impossible. Right. But if you have the right data set, which is um, past purchases that we collect mm -hmm. with the Kroger plus card and the right machine learning algorithm, then you can let these algorithms uh, tease out the patterns and maybe patterns that we as humans never would have identified mm -hmm. just because there's so much um, data behind the scenes. Gotcha. And then okay. with that, you have something that's more manageable um, and likely much more accurate than just writing a bunch of rules. Gotcha. Well, we're, we're glad that the Enterprise Data Science Academy is, is behind all of that and helping us to all better understand artificial, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and everything else that underlies what we're doing here at 8451. So how, how do you see the Enterprise Data Science Academy evolving? You know, it's fairly young now, right? What are we looking like in the next two to three years? Yeah, we are in infant stages. Um, the uh, academy itself right now, what we've been actively doing in 2019 and now that we're in 2020 is um, teaching internal courses. So I've been teaching a class, Demystifying Data Science and Machine Learning. Mm -hmm. About 100 people have gone through it. Um, but it, this year, we also want to add to those internally built courses, okay. teach other courses, not, um, so after the awareness part, okay, what is machine mm -hmm. learning data science? We need to go more into understanding and then adoption. Um, and we're going to do that by adding externally built courses as well. That way we kind of keep a pulse on the industry. There okay. are a lot of websites like Coursera or, uh, Udacity edX mm -hmm. that offer, mm -hmm. Um, more broader industry views of data science. So you're going to be offering education to the industry, not just to the 8451. So, sorry. No, we, we want to partner with um, these external okay. people to get access for our um, 8451 and Kroger employees gotcha. to get okay. them access to these externally built courses. Okay. And then the third phase would be to ramp up our consultation efforts where we identify a project and a team and bring them through from the internally built courses um, to the externally built courses, and then guide them through the whole process to make sure we're asking the right questions. We're getting the right data. We set expectations correctly, because that's mm -hmm. always a challenge with sure. machine learning. Um, they, they can fail. These projects can fail in unexpected ways. So still a lot to do. Um, but where we are now, we're trying to ramp up and get people interested and excited about taken part in the enterprise data science right. academy is there a recruiting component to this for 8451 and identifying the best data science talent that sort of thing um no that's a maybe a good idea <laughs> hey you're welcome yeah um and so uh lastly how many classes how many academy classes have you graduated uh so far well, no one's officially graduated because I'd say we have the freshman group that's gone in. Okay. Maybe 100 people have taken this first class. And then we want to see that through in, in the following year where they do a few more internal courses, 
some external courses, and then consult with them on a project. Gotcha. Okay, great. So to be determined. But TBD. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, great. Well, we appreciate that. We're anxious to kind of follow along and see how it does evolve, right? Um, and at this point, uh, we appreciate, Alex, you explaining the uh, Enterprise Data Science Academy. Uh, but it is now time for the 8451 lightning round, where we ask you a series of eight random questions for 51 seconds. Alex, are you ready? Let's do it. Let's go. If you could run any company in the world right now, wh who would it be? The Cleveland Browns. I think I could do a pretty good job. Awesome. Where do you get your best thinking done? Um, probably driving in the car. If your house was on fire, which three items would you save first? My three kids. <laughs> can, can I bring my wife too? <laughs> yes. we'll get back. If you had to move to another country, which would you choose? Uh, I think I'd like to live in Germany. What is your favorite thing about working at 8451? Work-life balance, and they're very supportive of personal goals. Have you ever cried during a movie? Oh, yeah. M most recently, Captain Phillips, that Great. ending scene yeah. with Tom Hanks. Yeah. What, what is one food you couldn't live without? Steak. What is your favorite way to end the day? I think just hanging out with my family. Good Being answer. Goofy. Good answer. How'd we do? Awesome. We made it. Congratulations, All right. Alex. <laughs> All right. You win nothing except for our admiration. <laughs> and with that, uh, thank you uh, to Alex thank Gutman you. for being our guest today. I'm your host, Dan O'Keefe, and we will see you next time on The Upload. Millen here. That's it for this month's episode of The Upload. We hope you enjoyed it and hopefully learned something new. Remember to give us a like and share your feedback. Until next month, stay curious.